Hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all really well. I'm well into my second trimester now, so I thought this is a good time to make a video of some of my first trimester must-haves. I have some of the items in front of me right now, but for the items that I don't, I will include some screenshots and clips of it. Um, I found all of these things really helpful and useful, and I hope it will help you too. So carry on watching the video, and I'll show you everything that I used. The first trimester is generally a difficult time. You've just found out you're pregnant, whether you've been preparing for it, whether it's a surprise, whether you've been planning for many, many years, whatever it may be. When it hits you first, it's really difficult to manage it, especially when you have your morning sickness and nausea, the tiredness and all of those things. So the most important thing that I would always say is to get your mindset checked. It is really, really important to have an honest talk with yourself and to be open about your thoughts, your fears, your worries and everything. I've already made a video about this and I will link that on here so that I don't have to repeat everything that I said. That's the most important thing during your first trimester, which is having your mindset in the right place. Next will be the food category, the food and the drink category. Now, I am not so much of a water drinker at all. I've got this bad habit that I hardly ever drink water before. I always drink a lot of tea, a lot of juices. I feel like I just cannot drink any water if I haven't got any other supplements into it. I need either glucose powder or, you know, sugar-free juice, squash, tea and all of those things. But ever since I was pregnant, from the first week onwards, it could be because it was summertime, it was hot, but it could also be because your body is generating another baby. Your body needs to generate a lot more blood and there's so much happening within your body and you get thirsty naturally. I became extremely, extremely thirsty that I needed to drink so much water. And this is one thing that I swear by. This bottle has the hourly timestamps on it. Because I'm so bad at drinking water, I will not be able to drink or I won't even know how much I drink if I didn't have this hourly timestamp. I actually bought this for work and I hardly ever used it. And I was using it while I was working from home also at the beginning of lockdown. Again, I didn't really follow the timestamp on it. I will probably drink half a day from 8 in the morning until 12 and in the afternoon I won't drink that much at all. If it gets cold, I always go for tea. And I drink tea, I don't drink water. You know, it's a vicious cycle of going round and round and round. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that when you need to drink water, especially when you need to measure how much water you drink, this timestamp is so helpful. You know how much you need to drink within the hour. And because you can see through, I find that it's so much more easier. There are a lot of other bottles like this about this size where you fill it up twice and that's your um that's your sufficient amount for that day you know when it's not see-through i feel like i don't really know how much i'm drinking i need to be able to see this so i know i'm drinking enough water every hour another thing i found really easy is that it has this straw here because of that straw it's so much more easier to drink with that straw when you're sipping through rather than just drinking like that it's just, I don't know, I think it's something in my mind or what, I don't know. But this has changed my water drinking game a lot. The next one is the ginger sweet. During my first trimester when I had my morning sicknesses and nausea and everything I could hardly ever eat. My morning sickness wasn't that bad and it wasn't necessarily morning at all. Most of the time it was in the evening or at night, especially after dinner. They generally say that ginger is good for nausea, so if you add a little bit of ginger in hot water or lukewarm water, that's good for you. But other than that, sometimes you need to chew something in your mouth all the time because your tongue feels very different, the taste in your mouth feels really, really different. So I relied on this ginger sweet a lot. But even then, I limited myself. I took about two maximum. Sometimes on dry occasions, I would probably take three a day. It's like a candy. It's got sugar coating on top of it and it's rather chewy. The action of chewing something in your mouth constantly helps with the nausea and also the taste with the candy and the ginger and a mixture of sugar and all of those things helps you a lot. So it calmed down my nausea a bit. Food-wise, I'm generally a very, very healthy eater and I'm very food conscious as well. I love my desserts and sweets, but because I've got very good discipline, I limit myself to desserts and sweets, probably like once a week or, you know, sometimes I have cheat days, of course. But other than that, with regards to general food, I avoid carb as much as possible because you have carb in everything else anyway. It's included in everything, so it's not like I'm not having any carb. I don't intentionally go for carb. I have high protein food and always high vitamin, a lot of veggie. I don't eat meat, so I'm a pescatarian. It's usually seafood and vegetables and that sort of a thing. 
During my first trimester, everything changed upside down. I've read that your body actually craves for carbs during this time. I was extremely surprised by myself, but I wanted a lot of white rice. I wanted a lot of bread. I couldn't eat brown rice at all. My general preference is brown rice or even couscous, but this time I couldn't. Every time I tried to have brown rice, I vomited everything out. I couldn't have spinach. I loved spinach usually but I couldn't eat it because of the texture, because of the way it was. So the only way I could ever down spinach was in a smoothie. Um, other than that, I cannot eat raw spinach or even cooked spinach as it is. But I had a lot of carb and that's important. And it's okay because your body actually craves these kind of things during the first trimester. So it's fine for you to forget about your diet. Um, Try and include as much vitamin and vegetables as possible. Try and include protein as well. But on and off, you do need potatoes and starchy food and your comfort food generally. The next category I want to talk about are books. I've also spoken about this before, but I want to show you some of the books. There are different types of books that you can read. You definitely need to read a lot of material about pregnancy, a lot of journals as well. Rely on NHS website if you live in UK. If you are in any other country, then rely on your government website. Always rely on your doctor or your midwife on what kind of materials that you can read. Um, you know, what kind of symptoms that you will have during your pregnancy, what to avoid, what not to avoid, and all of those things. But some of the books that I want to recommend are these. The first one is um, What to Expect When You're Expecting. Alright, now this book is quite thick, but don't be fooled by this at all. It's got a lot of information in here. You can get this online. It is also in an app as well. I find that the book was really helpful because it gave you a lot more information from what you would generally find in an app. Now, this is highly Americanized. So some of the things that they talk about insurances and, you know, um, symptoms or experiences and hospital experiences and all of those things may not be relevant to you especially if you're you know non-US citizen but other than that it's very helpful it gives you a general idea about what to expect every trimester and it goes from trimester to trimester even month to month so you don't need to finish reading everything in the beginning you just read it by the weeks or by the months and it helps you a lot so that was for me and this was for Lakshman, Expectant Father. People hardly ever talk about this book, but it is a very, very, very important book. Why you're pregnant is generally the women who experience everything and the men don't know. Whether it's your emotional feeling, your physical feeling, with everything, you are the one who's experiencing it. No matter how much you explain it to men, they are not going to understand. But this book does a very good job in getting your men involved. And it's so important to have your partner and your family involved. The expectant father sets the mindset in place for the fathers, as does what to expect when you're expecting does for the mothers. A father's role during the first trimester is to be able to support his wife spiritually, emotionally, and also physically. And I think this book does a very good job at training them to do that. Journaling is also a very good thing at this time. I generally type a lot. I write a lot because I think a lot. I'm more of a verbal person sometimes. So I have my moments of verbal diarrhea and all of those things. But I never really had a physical book to write in ages. And I didn't originally want to buy a baby journal at all. But I just wanted to give it a go. I looked at a few online and I thought it was really cute. And I thought, okay, let's just try. So this is the one that I got. It's a baby journal. It's right from bump to birth. In fact, it's all the way up till the first year of the baby also. This one is so interesting. It's got so many details on here. And I found that it was um, helping me to reflect on things. It asks you a question, for example, finding out why I thought I was pregnant, how I found out I was pregnant with you, how I felt when I found you, who I told and how they reacted to the news, hopes and fears. So you are writing for your baby to read when he or she grows up. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And then it goes by the weeks. You've got week one all the way up till, you know, 
the first year of the baby's life, obviously. They've given you space to put photos if you need it to, and then they've given you space to write everything that you want to about me, and then what I've been up to, you know, whether you had any sicknesses, any feelings, any cravings, what was your weight, and then there is sections where you can input your scans and things. This is a 20-week scan, and this is the one that I've um, kind of filled in all of those things and I found that it was helping me to reflect I was as I was filling this out at the end of each week and it was really really sweet and nice to remember all those things and I can imagine that it's going to be such a nice gift to give your baby when he or she is so much more older. Other than the informative kind of books there are also other books that you need to read. I generally read a lot. Most of my books are either fictional, non-fictional, Something serious, something um, educational usually. But in my first trimester, because I was feeling so run down and tired all the time, my brain just couldn't process anything at all. It was at this period that I got hooked on to watching Disney Plus and you know sitcoms and comedies and all of those things. And I happened to watch Saving Mr. Banks and Mary Poppins. For some reason, I've never seen Mary Poppins before. And when I was younger, I've never read Mary Poppins. I've read everything of Nancy Drew and Annie Blyton and you know all of those children's books and everything, but never Mary Poppins. And I was just so triggered after watching Saving Mr. Banks and I really wanted to read those books. So what did I do? ordered Mary Poppins books from Amazon and these are such interesting books. There are five series in this set, in this entire set and I just found it so so interesting. The description actually says it's for nine years and above. Um, regardless of how old you are, I feel like sometimes you just need to loosen up. You need something really light-hearted. So as I was looking for some sort of light-hearted reading, I just didn't want to be watching TV all the time. I wanted something useful also. I bought this and it was such a quick read. It was so imaginative. It was thought-provoking instead, you know. And I thought, I've just completely forgotten how to be adventurous. I've completely forgotten how to imagine things that doesn't happen. I've forgotten how to pretend play. Sometimes when I watch my nieces play and they're like, oh, you know you what, you can pretend play, you can pretend do this, you can pretend do that. I'm like, oh yeah, why don't I ever think of it? When you grow older, when you're an adult, you just completely forget to pretend, do you? You think about practicality, you think about being real and realistic and all of those things. You just forget to be a child and I think it's a good time to actually go back to being a child during your first trimester when you're so tired and worn out. Just relax, chill, you know, take a break. In line with relaxing and chilling and taking a break, you would probably need a few online subscriptions like Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix, what else is there? I think you could probably have Sky and all of those things but I didn't find Sky interesting. I cannot imagine anyone being ever bored with all of these things. I just watched a lot of shows. I binge watched a lot of shows. I'm not proud of it at all, but I really needed to. Like I said, I was just mentally exhausted. I couldn't process anything. I couldn't, um, you know, watch documentaries. I just got extremely bored. I wanted some real, real lighthearted um, comic and that sort of a thing. So yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it, but it is really, really helpful. Another category that I really have to talk about in the first trimester are clothes. Now, there are different types of clothes that you really need. First and foremost, um, maternity bras and underwears. You definitely need them, okay? You grow bigger in ways and shapes and sizes that you don't even imagine. I got some from Jojo Mama and Baby, I think that's what they're called. I got some from H&M, from Amazon, from Marks & Spencer. Um, I will add a link to all of these things if I can find it. And then there's this one thing that I want to show you, is this robe that I got from Marks & Spencer. This is the softest, the softest robe ever. I just cannot explain it. Ever since I got it, there has not been a day that I've never worn it other than the time when it's in the wash and drying. But apart from that, I am always wearing this. Because I work from home, it's been so much more easier. 
I am generally quite cold-blooded at home, even with the heating on. My feet and my hands and my body gets really, really cold, so I need to always bundle up and be warm all the time. At home, I always wear pajama bottoms and jumpers, and I have this robe on. Um, when I have some sort of a meeting, if I need to have my video on, then I take the robe off. But other than that, the robe stays on. It's just so soft and so comfortable. You have to try Maternity pants is so important. I stopped wearing my regular jeans right from week 5 onwards. Week 4, I still wore it, but week 5, I couldn't because you have a lot of bloating in the first couple of weeks. I didn't have any symptoms. In fact, I didn't even start showing until 12 weeks, maybe. I was really thin, so I felt as if a little bit of bump was showing up um, by around 12 weeks, and I kind of popped after 16 weeks odd. But before that, because you are bloating, because you are uncomfortable in tight jeans and everything, especially when you're working from home, it's best to have um, either jogger bottoms or, you know, thin casual pants or maternity jeans. I tried several different types of maternity jeans and the only one that I liked the most where the size and the material and the quality and everything was really good was H&M. I got a pair of black leggings and a pair of blue jeans from H&M. The black leggings is like a hybrid between um, jeggings like leggings jeans and also skin tights. You know, it's like a combination of both and it's super, super comfortable. I just didn't like anything over the bump or over my belly. So I only wear this when I go out. And also the blue jeans, it looks so good. The fit is really, really nice. Here's a tip when you're buying maternity clothes. I thought I had to size up for everything when I bought maternity clothes, but you don't have to. If you're a regular size 8 or size 6 or whatever size you are, that's all you look for in maternity section because it's designed and cut to fit you that way. So just look for your regular size and it will still fit you, I guarantee. Most of my other clothes are generally really, really loose fitting anyway. I don't really wear tight fitting clothes. You will be able to fit into your regular clothes for the first trimester without having to buy a lot of new things during the first trimester. Unless you're the kind who always wear like skin tight clothes where you can't breathe in, then you will need to do a little bit of shopping and a little bit of damage to your bank account as well. But other than that, you should be able to get away with regular clothes. Just get easy going jeans and pants, that's all. That's the biggest thing that you need during the first trimester. And last but not least, get yourself a few pregnancy apps. I've got about six, maybe even seven. I don't know. I've got a whole folder of pregnancy apps and I use each one for different purposes. Let me know if you're interested and I'll probably make another video just talking about the apps, why I use it, how I use it and how useful it is. Because when I first found out I was pregnant, I was googling a lot of apps and I was looking at a lot of other YouTube videos and I had to test out a few apps before I decided which ones I wanted to use for what purposes and all of those things but these apps will help you track things whether you write it down on a diary or whether you want to log it on your apps whichever is convenient for you but I still feel like you need a diary as in you need a journal for your baby journal but you also need those apps for your own tracking of all of your symptoms your weight your size and um, your appointments especially your mood swings and all of those things so it comes in handy for different purposes. So there you have it. Those are my first trimester must-haves. It has helped me ease my journey a lot, actually, by leaps and bounds. Now, if I think about it, I don't think I would have been able to get over the first trimester without any of these things at all. It is very essential, I feel, but some of them are optional. It's entirely up to you. Just give it a go. Think about your lifestyle and see what would suit you and what wouldn't. And then you can adapt it that way. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you've had any of these favorites yourself or if you've used any of these things and you found it useful. And just drop it and say a hi. I will see you again next week. Until then, take care. Bye.